you how to edit the settings of your Google form. So if you go ahead and click on the cog wheel in the upper right hand corner and click on settings, you'll notice that here are the general settings. You can choose to collect email addresses. If this is anonymous, obviously you wouldn't collect email addresses. Most of the time, if you're using this in a classroom, you'll want to collect their email addresses because if you forget to ask what is your name, you might not know who submitted what. So I get in the habit of collecting email addresses. You can, um, right here, there's this little question mark. I'll tell you exactly what it does. Do you want your respondents to receive a copy of their responses via email? Sometimes you might want them to, and sometimes you might not. That's up to you. Whether or not, you'll check the box. Do you want to limit it to one response per person? If you do that, it does require them to be signed into Google, or it won't know who they are to know if they can submit one or more than one. Do you want respondents to edit their form after they submit or see a summary chart of everyone's responses after they submit? You can check or uncheck these if you like. Moving on to presentation. Do you want to show a progress bar? So if you have multiple sections or pages of your form, they can see page one of one, I mean, sorry, page one of three, and they'll know they have two more pages after that page. If you only have one page, then you don't need this, but it is for a user to know how long the form is. It gives them a better idea if you have a progress bar. Do you want to shuffle the question order? So not the answers, but the question order. So if you are using this as an assessment and you do want the question shuffled, this is where you could go to shuffle the question. Keep in mind though, if you have a picture and you say, please use the image below to answer the following questions, and then you shuffle them, the picture might not be in the right place to follow what you're asking them to do. So just be a bit mindful of what's in your form when you check this box. Do you want to show a link to submit another response? So because I have limit to one response, they can't do that. If I uncheck that, now I can show a link to submit another response. I think that's there by default. So you can uncheck that if you don't want that there. Your confirmation message. So after they complete the form, it will say your response has been recorded. You can put something else there. Like if you're using this in a classroom, after you can write like, after you complete this form, please pull out your writer's notebook and begin writing the next assignment or whatever you'd like them to do. Um, you can write a confirmation here. You could even put a link. If you're teaching maybe elementary, you could put a link to a math game that they can play so that they're engaged and quiet while everyone else takes their exam. Do you want to disable auto save for all respondents? So this is a new feature in Google by default now, as long as the user is logged into Google, they can save where they are because by default, if they close their out of the form, it, they'd lose their responses. So if you don't want it to auto save, then you have to check this box because by default now, they're, when they're filling it out, their answers will be auto saved for 30 days, I believe. The next one is quizzes. I'm gonna make a whole separate video on quizzes, but if you'd like to turn this form into a quiz, so this is really just a form, a survey. Think of it like a survey. A form is a survey until you turn it into a quiz. A quiz is an assessment, there's a grade point value, and you can turn this on and say make this a quiz, and you can choose when you'd like to release the grades and what the respondent will see after they submit the form. Again, I'll have a whole separate video on quizzes, but this is how you'd make it a quiz and how you would choose whether you want their grade to be released immediately or after you manually review it. And then what do you want them to see? Do you want them to see missed questions, correct answers, point value? And if you hover over any of these question marks, it will give you more information about them. When, I'm not gonna turn this into a quiz now, um, when you're done changing the settings to your preference, you go ahead and you click on save. But I also want to show you one more thing that most people don't know. If you click on these three dots in the top right and go down to preferences, these allow you to change your default settings. So these are your default, default form settings to all forms that you create in the future. So if you just want to check this box to collect emails, by default, every form you create in the future will automatically collect the emails. And another 
video, I showed you how to make a question required. You can check this box. So all questions are always marked as required by default. Of course, you can untoggle that bar later for each individual question, but by default, all questions would be required until you changed it. And if you do have a, um, turn this into a Google Forms quiz, you can set a point value at a default of one. By default, all the questions are zero until you add a point value, so you can change it to whatever point value you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck these so I don't forget to do that for other videos. And this is how you change your settings and your default settings in Google Forms.